Now let's talk about open string voicings, chord fragments, and interior voice movement inside the chords. These are kind of the finer details that I really love when I'm playing chord melody arrangements or playing alone or in a situation with just me and a bass player where I have the ability to be able to use all these things, especially when I play alone, because all these little subtle details can really stand out and really uh, be made apparent. So I'm going to take you through some uh, permutations of these using a number of different chord qualities just to get you started thinking about some of these concepts and how to use them. Let's demonstrate some open strings now. I love these sounds, especially at slower tempos where you want things to ring and have kind of a pianistic chime-like quality. You need to be a little bit careful in terms of balance, and we're going to address that with some right hand technique at the very end of this video. So, in terms of what open strings work, I typically use one of the top three, the high E, the B, or the G string, unless I'm playing a note in the bass. So the way to begin with this is just to find out what open strings are available to you. If I'm playing C major, of course, any one of those top three open strings would work. The E is the major third, the B is the major seven, the G is the fifth. So I might start with a basic voicing. Now if I simply doubled the E on top, not so interesting. So I might put that sharp 11 on top. This is a finger I used in the last video with the open E string. I might decide to put the 9 on top. Uh, rather the 9 on top in terms of the last fretted note, and then play the open E on top of that. Or I might just say, decide to play a sound like this. So that's how the open E is functioning as the third. Um, I could decide to put the open G string into the mix, and then in which case I might want to put a flatted fifth next to it. So a sound like this. Or maybe the six here. So there's one, six, five, major seven tonic. Here's a chord I like that's a C major, uh, a C major 9 with a 6 on top with a sharp 11. Or I might play a sound like this. So in this case, you're hearing lots of open E's, G's, and B's. You can go to other positions on the neck. Take a C major like this, very basic. See how it sounds to add an open string. Uh, I'm already doubling the E, so that's not going to sound so interesting. I might want to play it like this. This one I never played that I might play again, actually. So there's tonic, major 7, flat 5, perfect 5th, open E. Maybe I'll put the tonic back in here and play it like a... Uh... Oh, I don't want to do that. That's the chord I probably wouldn't play. Back to our C major, here's our... Maybe I'll put the sharp 11 on top and play it like... Again, I'm doubling the E, so I probably wouldn't do that. Maybe I'd play it like this. Also doubling, probably wouldn't do that. This is trial and error, isn't it? I would probably play that one. This actually looks like a D dominant chord with a C in the bass. We're discovering things together right now. Here's a basic C major on the 10th fret. Maybe I'll put the open E on top. I'd probably play that. Maybe I'll put the uh, 6 here, and maybe put the 3 here. I would play that. Here's one I've used already. This is a G major triad with a C in the bass, and I'm going to use the open G and open high E string. So, as I said in some of the earlier videos, the trick to remembering these chords and retaining them is putting them in a context. So, maybe a 2 5 1. Maybe we're playing something like. Again, voice leading is critical here as well. Uh, so we've talked about a number of major chords using open strings now. Let's talk about some minors. If I wanted to play C minor, obviously the open E string has to go away because that's my major third. Would the B string work? Yes, it's the major seven. That would work for C melodic minor. So I might take a C minor like this. Now if I played the open B string here, it wouldn't work so well because I have a B flat in there. I would put the sixth in, maybe play it like this. That doesn't sound so much like minor because there's no third in it, so I might play it this way. So there's actually a C minor major 6 with the open B. So any kind of a C minor I play that has an open B string is going to sound like a melodic minor. Here's a basic minor triad with the open B. It becomes melodic minor. Maybe I'll play it like this with the 9. So this is a C minor triad. I'm making it minor add 9 actually because there's no 7 with the open B string. I could use the open G string, that's my fifth, so maybe I'll put the sixth in here and play it like this. That's one I've actually played before. So can you see what we're doing here? It's trial and error. I'm using existing fingerings combined with open strings to see the sounds that I like. So this not only applies to major and minor chords, but of course to dominant chords as well. Chord fragments is something I like a lot. 
So rather than playing a minor chord like this, maybe I'd simply play this. Or maybe I'd simply play this. That could be either minor or major. So small fragments of chords suggesting the harmony. Rather than playing a 2-5-1 as D minor G7, C major, maybe I'm simply playing... Or maybe I'm playing... So small fragments suggesting the harmony. Listen to Jim Hall, Pat Metheny, John Schofield for some of these kinds of ideas because they use these devices a lot as well. Last thing to think about, moving around inside the chord or voice leading inside a chord. What I tell people to do initially is just look at a simple chord fingering and try to add some notes from the scale or the arpeggio to that to create some movement inside. So if we're playing our 2-5-1 again, maybe for my D minor I'm just coming up to scale, G to my C. So movement around inside the chord.